Hey guys, welcome to Encounter. We hope you're enjoying the nice sunny weather. Let's get straight in with Norvengers. This is not good. Doris Johnson's just found the Infinity Helmet and one of the Infinity Stones. I'm gonna need some help. Hey, you right, boy? Oh, I heard you needed some help. No, that's my name. Hello, Mr. DVD man. Uh, my name is Div Ision, and I am here to help. Doris is live on Instagram, and he knows where the next Infinity Stone is. <laughs> Oh no, he's got the stone. Doris now has one million followers on Instagram. Guys, guys, it's more of these phone zombies. Oh, they're everywhere. Doris is using the new Unfinity Stone to control people using his new Instagram account. This is bad. It's clever, but it's bad. What do I do? Candy Crush or Fruit Ninja? Well, I'm going. Oh, ah! Just embrace it. Yeah. COVID. But, but we're allowed to hug now, and I, I, I thought you'd appreciate it. Guys, this is serious. Oh. <gasps> Doris is live on Instagram again. We cannot keep letting him take over Instagram. <gasps> what if we could create our own Instagram account and try to reach all the people that Doris is controlling? Do you think you could do that? Like some kind of reverse Googling? Hmm. Well, I could try. <laughs> and we could call it the No Avengers. Oh, here we go. <laughs> because it's like the Avengers. Yeah, I'm <laughs> but, but from Norfolk. <laughs> you, you get it. No. He, get, yeah. he gets it. Doris, Doris, Doris. Did you think you'd done this all by yourself? It was I. I made you who you are. I was the one that helped you stumble across those infinity stones. You fool. I am Shady Guy! <laughs> oh, boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, you baby! Now listen to me! If you want to keep your powers and all your Instagram followers, then you best do as I say! <laughs> We've got our own Norvengers Instagram account. <laughs> it's over to you, Diversion. Oh, my God.
Did it work? I think so. We will avenge you, Division. Good. We have to tell the people that Doris is controlling them. What's happening? I don't know! Here at Norwich Youth for Christ, we don't just provide fantastic online content, we also do real life events, most namely Encounter Camp, which is happening this summer in partnership with Integrate Youth for Christ. It's at Sizewell Hall. It's going to be from the 28th of August to the 1st of September, and it's going to be better than good. So if you want to find out more information, go to the Integrate Youth for Christ website. So, I've been given a prepared biography about our speaker today. Nick Blanche once saved an orphanage from a supervillain. Nick Blanche used to run a marathon every other day just for fun on one foot. And Nick Blanche is the winner of the Nick Blanche Award for Most Attractive Norwich Youth for Christ Team Member. Our speaker today is Nick Blanche, the director of Norwich Youth for Christ. But before that, we're going to go into a time of worship led by one of our young people, Leo. So I'm just going to quickly pray and then we'll get straight on it. God, I just thank you that we find true freedom in you. Amen. Show. 
Did you know that The Simpsons has been going since 1989? There have been 32 seasons and over 700 episodes. That means that probably for most of you watching this today, The Simpsons is actually older than you are. There's a scene way back where Bart Simpson gets to go on Krusty the Clown's show. He's a big Krusty fan, and so he comes out onto this live stage audience and he just has to say one line. But actually, just as he comes on, he knocks into one of the kind of background scenes and it peels over and as it does it hits another one which then hits another one, which hits another one, hits another one and they all topple over. It's a complete mess, it's ruined. There's a big pause, everyone looks at Bart Simpson and he says, it wasn't me. When I was about eight I used to share a bedroom with my younger brother and our bedroom had windows which opened out onto the flat roof. A flat roof was at the top of our kitchen. And when we went to bed sometimes we thought it would be really fun to climb out of the windows and dance around on the roof. We knew we weren't supposed to be doing it, but we did it anyway and thought this was hilarious. The trick was of course that if we thought our mum was coming upstairs we had to kind of scrabble in through the windows, get into bed and pretend that we weren't doing anything wrong. We always got found out because it turns out the neighbour could see us dancing on the roof so she just told my mum and we got in trouble. But it still didn't stop us from kind of absolutely saying no no we weren't doing anything we were we were fast asleep here. There's a story in the bible of a woman caught in adultery and what that meant is that she'd been caught having sex with somebody who wasn't her husband. And the people that caught her were outraged they kind of dragged her out threw her in the street in front of Jesus and they were uh, so shocked and appalled by her behavior that they wanted to do something about it. And in fact, they said to Jesus, you know, actually the law says that we should kill her. We should stone her, pick up stones, hurl them at her until she is dead. They were so shocked, so outraged at what she had done. This was a high pressure situation that Jesus was dealing with. And so they are asking Jesus, what should we do with this woman? Jesus takes a moment and says, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do this, you, you can throw stones, but the first person to throw the stone has to be somebody who hasn't done anything wrong. And the Bible says that the crowd gradually kind of drifted away. I want you just to imagine that for a moment, just think about that situation, it's highly charged people who are like they're outraged, angry, annoyed, you know, this is an awful thing that this woman has done, we need to do something over and they're so angry they're willing to kill this woman over. They might have even had the rocks in their hands ready to launch at her. But when Jesus pops that question back to them, you know, if you have done nothing wrong then you can be the one to throw the stone, then people gradually kind of acknowledge that they've done something wrong and drop the stone and walk away. And if we really kind of think that question through for ourselves, have we ever done something wrong? We know. We know we've made mistakes. We know we've caused problems, we've acted selfishly, we've hurt people, we've done things wrong. And, and so how do you live with that? Because those certain things, they create shame and, and guilt and sadness. How do you live with that? Well, most of the time, we, we minimise it. 
We make it out like it's not that big a deal. Well, I, you know, I didn't kill anyone. It's not, not that bad. It, it's okay. It was only a small thing. And we just try and kind of make it out like this not that big of a deal. It's a coping strategy. We might even have a grading system in our head, you know, kind of like a, a number system. Maybe uh, it's not written on a board, but it might be something like this, where we've got, you know, number one, Hitler. Hitler was really bad, okay? He, like, killed, like, literally millions of people. Like, that's number one. And then we could go up all the way up to maybe number 10, where Mother Teresa, Mother T, as I call her, okay? And she's done, like, amazing, she's an amazing woman. Like, she, she basically looked after really sick people and, and, like, gave away all of her wealth. And, wow, what, what a woman. And so, like, I'm not as bad as Hitler. I'm perhaps not as good as Mother Teresa, but like, I'm a pretty good guy. Like, I try and listen to people and help people and try and like do my recycling and stuff. So I'm like, maybe I'm like a six. And like, if I try really hard, I can be like a seven. And this is kind of how we minimize and explain things away. The Bible says that everybody has made mistakes. In fact, the word they use is sin. Everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, falling short of God's standards. What does that mean? It means our grading system is a bit useless. And actually, it's kind of like it's the other way, whereby our numbers are so small and teeny tiny, they're right at the bottom. Like this is, the 10 is still down here. But actually, there's this huge gulf between where God is. And so, we are kind of, separated from who God is. In fact, Jesus even said, like, if we've ever sinned, if we've ever done something wrong, we are a slave to that sin. We are, we are trapped by that. And we know, we, we know that this, you know, there is no minimizing this. It means that our, our mistakes have an impact. They impact our character, who we are. They impact our relationships and cause damage. But more than that, they impact our soul. And there's an eternal consequence to that. It means that we are separated from God, it's just like that board. There's a gap there and we can't get to him. How do we live with our mistakes? Well, the good news is it's not about what you can do. It's about what he has done for you. There's a verse in the Bible which says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not about you, it's about what he has done for you. See, this is why he died on the cross. You know, literally the, the price for your, uh, your wrongs, your wrongdoing, your, your mistakes is passed over onto Jesus. He paid the penalty. It was put on him, your sin was put on him. And that was why he died on the cross so that actually we don't need to kind of be good and get from a seven to an eight or eight to a nine but actually so that we can just be straight up here straight with God our mistakes can be forgiven and we can live free from that how do we do that it's a gift and a gift needs to be accepted it's not automatic, it needs to be received. And so, you know, if you were a slave and you were in actual slavery, if freedom was offered to you, you'd need to accept that. If you continue to live the life that you already had done, you would still be a slave. You need to accept what Jesus has offered you. But more than that, it's not just about belief. See, that verse that I read out, you know, it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, it's more than just believing, it's also declaring with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. See, even the demons believe in Jesus, but that doesn't mean that they are free from their mistakes. No, it's also about being able to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord of your life. This is a hard thing. It, this, this means that we are willing to accept that we've done things wrong and that we were traveling down one path and then we're saying, no, I'm not gonna continue down that path. I'm gonna change and move and follow Jesus down a different path. We call that repentance. That's just what that means. It means recognizing that we're going down one route and then we're switching 
and going down another route, and that route is Jesus. Jesus is Lord of your life. You're gonna try and follow him and do what he asks of you instead of trying to just follow your own desires and passions. This is a hard thing, and not everybody will want to do that. Many people will look at that and go, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make Jesus Lord over my life. I, there are too many sacrifices, too many, too many things that would cost me. I, I would prefer to keep living in my life as I am now. I will just minimise and say these things don't really matter and it's okay. And you can do that. But that eternal consequence to your soul is still there. How do you be truly free from your mistakes? You believe in heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and you say that he's Lord of your life. When you do that, then you are truly free from your mistakes. You do not need to live in guilt, shame, sadness anymore because he has forgiven you. I want to offer that opportunity to you right now. I want to pray a prayer with you right now. And so if that's you, if you're saying, yeah, do you know what? I've never done that before. Maybe I've just believed that Jesus is, is alive, that Jesus existed and he rose from the dead, but I've never said he's Lord of my life. And I want to give that a shot. Then I invite you to pray this prayer with me now. Heavenly Father, uh, we just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for, for who you are and the fact that you died on a cross for us, for our mistakes. And I don't want to minimise any more. I don't want to say that those things don't matter, it's not important. I want to acknowledge the fact that these things are important, that they do impact us. And uh, I just want to say I'm sorry for those things. And I want to acknowledge that you are Lord of my life. And I change and turn from those things and want to follow you. And thank you, Lord, that I know that means that I can be free from guilt and sadness, shame, that actually I can be forgiven. I am restored and I have a relationship with you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. I hope you prayed that prayer. If you did, it'd be great for you just to put that in the comment, in the chat, that would be really, really helpful. Um, uh, just because we want to be able to support you and m maybe you want to connect with us more deeply, join our Discord, put something in there. Following Jesus isn't always easy. So we want to support you to make sure that you can do that with some help. Thanks for listening. What a great talk from Nick and he's given us a lot to think about. Here are some questions to ponder as we go into our next song. You hold the reins on the sun and the moon Like horses driven by kings You cover the mountains, the valleys below With the breath of your mighty wings Old treasures of wisdom and things to be known Are hidden inside your hand In this fortunate turn of events You asked me to be your friend You asked me to be your friend The breath of your desire Where could I run? Where could I hide? From your heart's jealous fire All treasures of wisdom and things to be known Are hidden inside your in this fortunate turn of events You asked me to be your friend You asked me to be your friend
Guys, as ever, thank you so much for joining us. Please do all the usual things that I talk about at this section. Like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the Norwich Youth for Christ channel for more videos like this, join our Discord server, and follow us on Instagram. Shit, shady guy. It is I. Shady guy! No!